Thank you, Kristen. Hello, everyone out there. And hello, Frank. I have Frank joining me today up from Camus. He's been up there for about a week and a half now, but hopefully on his way back soon, maybe, maybe tomorrow. But yeah, I wanted to, uh, it's been a few weeks since I've been on and yeah, actually what Kristen is sharing is pretty, pretty deep to my heart as well. I, uh, I felt so good all day and then we had a bit of, uh, I had some technical difficulties trying to communicate with Jeff and Nicholas and when we do music, there's an original sound setting so that we can hear the sound. Otherwise, it sounds awful to the listener. And somehow we're live streaming this actually on Facebook, A Course in Miracles Facebook page. And somehow that messed up our setting. So I was sitting there and all this responsibility came on to my mind. And of course, what happened is I wanted to project it out. Emily didn't give me this stuff in time and all this stuff, you know, came up and I sat with it. And actually, you know, I do these processes in my mind now, the spirit and the instrument for peace and that's a bit actually what we were talking, we were going to talk about today. Me and Frank, you know, I'd come from 12 steps and the fourth step is actually the turnaround step. You know, if you talk Byron Katie's work or any of it and the fourth step for me, the first time I got to it. So the first step of course is powerlessness and the principle for the first step is honesty. The second step is hope. When we come to find, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And then the third step we've talked about for a few weeks, which is this decision to turn our will over. And that's the faith step. But the fourth step is the courage. That's the, the spiritual principle for the fourth step is courage. And, you know, in the course, they talk about the fear to look within and looking within. And this is a step that a lot of people, even in 12 step programs, they turn and run at that point. They all, you know, you, 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 the two steppers, we call them two steppers that come in and do one, two, one, two, one, two. They call it the shuffle, the two step, step shuffle, because once we get to that point of letting go of this idea that someone out there is to blame, then I actually have to turn around and look within. And I remember I was anxious because I'd had an experience, which I shared on this show. I was anxious to get to the fourth step and my practice was actually patience with it because my first sponsor had me, you know, go through it. But it's always a good idea because you can't do this step wrong. Like you can't do a spirit wrong if you're actually asking spirit and you're inviting it in to actually look at your own mind. You can't really do it wrong. But the tools that we have with spirit and instrument for peace and of course what I'm talking about today is the four step and it's made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So, you know, the fearless part was, is, is the part that I have to look at these, the end of the step book, it actually says, if we've done this correctly, we swallowed some huge chunks about ourselves that we were unaware of because there's so much, there's so many layers to it. And this goes on, this continues for a lifetime. You know, I do these things over and over. And the first time I did a four step, it took me weeks, you know, to actually write the names down. You know, I'm going to have Nicholas share a screen uh, in a few minutes, but the first thing is resentment because there's three inventories we take in a 12 step board program and it's the resentment inventory because resentment is what actually makes a lot of us drink or use or do those things because we have this, I'll show you when we end up hurting ourselves is what the, what the process looks like. But the first column is actually the who we, and when we take this process, we're actually supposed to not go across. We go down, we write all the people that we have resentments with and, whether the ones from the past, and it could be institutions, it could be anything. You know, my high school, I went to a Catholic high school. I had a ton of resentments towards them, and I had to look at all those things, you know, and certainly the bigger ones on my list, father and, you know, and those ones and certain friends. But after we write all those people, the first time I actually was going to look at this, I had nobody. I was like, I don't resent really anyone. Like, I was so, so much in denial that I think I didn't really hate anyone. And then I quickly realized I hated everybody for something, <laughs> something I hated everybody for. So after you write that down, the second column, actually, maybe Nicholas, you can show that. Uh, I, I just printed one page of what we, I actually give to people in the program and 12 step programs to show them. And the first column is that I'm resentful at a person. And I actually write all those people down on the left hand side. And then the second column is the cause. What am I resentful at them for? Why am I angry? Or, you know, this in the spirit process is what am I feeling? And I actually have to go to specifics because we need to use specifics. This always happens with spirit and all this, this, the courage to look within. Sometimes I'll have an upset and I go to it quickly because I know the benefit of, of it now. But originally it was like, I don't want to do that, you know? And 
this second column is why I'm angry. I have to have a specific because if I use broad strokes, the ego's just going to use metaphysical ghosting and all this stuff to go over it. But I have to use a specific. I'm angry because Emily didn't give me the stuff on time. You know, that was what it looked like in my mind before I turned it around, you know, this morning. And then this next column was the most beneficial. And this I still use in my mind. Again, originally this took me three weeks. Now this takes me seven seconds, you know, because I've practiced it over and over. But this next part is what part of self was hurt. And so in the program, we talk about seven parts of self and these build up our self concept. So this, these columns actually help me get in touch with what the belief is. Cause I often get caught up on the belief level in spirit. Sometimes I'll get to it and I don't want to look at it or I don't know what it is. And I go back to this process. Like what part of myself is hurt? Is it my self esteem and what self esteem is what I think of myself? Is it my pride? What others think of me? And let me tell you the first time I did that, Everything I did, those first two columns were checked. <laughs> I asked my sponsor, am I doing this wrong? He's like, no, this is what you're doing it right. And then we have the, uh, we have ambitions, you know, things I want. You know, I want my own little plans and designs, things I want to happen. You know, we have our pocketbook, desire for personal wealth, property, prestige even, which is more an ambition. Then we have emotional security, a basic sense of my own well-being. Any one of these areas with any resentment is touched on. And that's when I feel this, you know, this huge restriction or whatever, you know, it feels like in the moment. And the last one is, well, we have personal relations, which is, is it affecting my relations with other people? And then the last one is sex relations, which is basically my desire for physical intimacy. And anytime I have an upset and I think I'm angry for something, I guarantee you, because I've been through a lot of them, that they fall in one of these categories. And when I'm able to check that box or I do it in my mind and say, oh, it's affecting this, there's a belief behind it, whether it's sex relations, oh, someone shouldn't hit on my girlfriend or whatever the thought is, a belief is generated from there, whether it's my pride is always affected. People shouldn't lie to me or people shouldn't treat me that way. People should give me their things on time. Whatever it is, it is affected in that way and it helps me get in touch with that belief. And then, of course, in the fourth column, which in 12 steps, it's, you know, what was the nature, you know, of my wrong? Because where was I to blame? And again, this is where we had talked about before that in 12 steps, it can get caught up in the behavioral level, like thinking that there was something wrong. But for me, I had to go through this process because there was a lot of things I believed I did wrong. And I shared on my first show, you know, a lot of it had to do with things that I didn't do. You know, like I shared about my mother and father and cousin, best friends. I didn't allow them to love me. You know, that was actually one of the things that was really strong for me. I wouldn't let people do that. But in that last column, I can actually check where I was selfish, dishonest, afraid, whatever it is. And then when I can look at that, I can see what part I had in it and I can let that go. But a lot of times for the ones I did, I, there wasn't even a part where I can say, where was I to blame? A lot of times the blame was I was holding on to the belief in the third column. I was holding on to this concept that no, this shouldn't happen. You know, and I shared again on my first show, I think I may have shared about this woman that blew the doors open to the step when she, I was in the room and she talked about being raped. And I, and I saw it all so clearly that she was holding on to, again, no one should touch my body or whatever the belief is behind that, that she couldn't come to an understanding that there was someone out there to blame and she ended up leaving. And I don't know whatever happened to her, but this is the resentment. Resentment actually means to refeel refeel over and over. And that's all the egoic mind does is make something out there that I can refeel to keep me in this hell that, you know, we were talking about earlier on the shows. But yeah, I kind of wanted to present this because we talk about the steps a lot and, you know, give some examples. But even my, my own wife asks me, can you explain the step a little more? Because I don't know what they are. And these things are helpful. Like, again, I still use this process to help me look into the beliefs and help me to get in touch with What's actually going on? And this is the same process, you know, as Spiri, and it's the same thing, but the more I practice it, this is the mind training. You know, what are masters? What are people that have a pristine mind like David? It's someone that has mastered their resentments. They've mastered this idea of projection. It just doesn't happen. The fears are not there. The projection is not there. It's all coming back to the mind. And that's what this step actually has done for me and still does. I still use it. So I, I, I see Frank's back on the screen and it was great. I actually was feeling a bit like, oh, I don't have enough time between the shows. And I went into the room and I called Frank and I get a text that Frank just showed up in Camus. He came down from the monastery. And as soon as I talked to him on the phone, like everything fell away. It was like, ah, oh, oh, Frank, it's like my <laughs> co-pilot is there, you know? So it was really, it was really great to uh, 
even talk to you for a minute. But uh, yeah, Frank has 34 years experience with this step. So <laughs> see what he's got to say about. Am I on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I um, I um, I was just thinking about something. The you know when you said the resentment and the list, and I I just put everybody, <laughs> everybody I knew, because there was a resentment you know to to towards everybody, but then I realized you know it sort of uh, you know it repeats itself. It's always kind of the same thing that gets. Um, that gets triggered. And, um, you know, one of the great things about this step was that, uh, you know, uh, when you come in with all this shame and everything we did with the drugs and the alcohol, and, you, and, and it's that feeling that we're the only ones that ever did this and we're totally alone in this. So when, when we uh, expose it, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's such a, a relief. And I always say, you know, <clears throat> coming into this community, I have a big advantage of having done, you know, of having been exposed to this step because part, the biggest part of it is really exposing. So I don't, you know, it's just getting in touch. And, uh, you know, I just spent the last few days up at the monastery with David and Lisa and, um, you know, the, 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 the women who are staying there it was such a quiet environment and the beautiful, uh, you know, in this Canyon. So it was very, uh, <clears throat> you know, I could really get in touch with, with, with stuff. And, and, you know, also, um, one of the things that really helps is, uh, you know, music or the movies we show because it really bring, you know, it brings me to tears. And, and once these tears are coming, I'm open. You say, okay, now you, you have it, you know, you just, I give everything to you. Um, because I think it's that openness that, uh, that, that uh, you know, sp spirit needs to, to get in there, you know. Uh, and so with the fourth step in the program, I could really clean out a lot of stuff, but it, just you know this is another jump here because the the the, the course really uh, asks to go deeper and to forgive and forgiving meaning to see it's just all in my mind you know whatever happens to me now uh, I see it's a reflection of my mind it was very clear yesterday when I was walking in the canyon and I love, you know, I love the Southwest. I used to live there and I love that environment. And, uh, you know, and I was overwhelmed by the beauty, but at the same time, and, you know, this is, this is my mind. This is all. And, and, you know, it was one of these times when it really, it, I wasn't just blabbing what's in the book. I really felt it, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's the silence. Um, but, you know, the, 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 major work has or the major leap was done with the four step and then in the 10 step where it says you know continue to take personal inventory there's some language i don't like so much uh, like and when we were wrong promptly admitted it because that can can uh, um, you know if it's misunderstood uh, it can uh, generate guilt but, and, and everything, you know, this is another thing I'm finding out. Everything is guilt. It's all guilt, you know. So the moral inventory word, I don't like the word moral, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was, okay, morality. So that can mislead, you know, I'm going to be good now. But it's not that I'm going to be good that, that we, you know, what is working the program? What is practicing the program? I'm going to be my true self now. Mm -hmm. And to be my true self, I have to clean up, you know, all the beliefs. And I think the most powerful prayer I've always said over the years and just came to me is, um, what did, what, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, what, what is it I'm still hanging on to that separates me from you? You know, that's really, 
you know, and this I, I did consistently even before I knew the course because I, I want to move Frank out of the way so I can be myself, be true to my, myself. And that self is what we get to discover, you know. Um, but, but in order, you know, when, to, to, to get there for, you know, when you come in um, uh, through the 12 steps, uh, we have, this is a, it's an amazing beginning to, to write down this stuff and just to open to someone. And, and, and usually that person, you, it says, you know, admit to God and to another human being. And that other human being is just <laughs> sitting there, saying, no big deal. I've done that too, you know? And so that's very, um, that's very, I mean, it's very freeing. I thought, wow. I'm not alone with this. So one of the greatest, and it says in the book, you know, one of the greatest rewards of this step is we get um, rid of that feel of, feeling of loneliness because there's all this shame and then there's that loneliness and I'm on the only one that's that screwed up and anybody finds out who I am, you know, and then you see there's a whole room full of people who think the same. And, and, um, and, and you know, that's, that was a big, um, that was such a, a, a relief. But now, you know, I'm going in deeper because I know everything needs to be exposed. You know, that prayer that I'm saying, what am I holding on to is really that. It's like, what is in there that you're still protecting? And I don't know that I'm protecting that. I learned that in the course. I didn't know I was afraid of God. I learned that in the course. You know, the big book in, in 12 Steps tell me I'm a child of God. So I know, you know, if I'm a child of God, my true nature is God. And that's what I want to be, you know, is, is, is the divinity, the, the holiness. And, you know, if I don't spend time connecting with that in step 11, I'll never tr trust that holiness that is God and me and, you know, I'm one. And it says that in the book too, I'm this one that has all power and I'm one with that power, but I cannot access it completely. If there's still some, you know, if I'm holding on to beliefs and, and now I'm at, in a, at a stage of my life where I have to let go of every belief. There's nothing that can be, um, Oh, I see my daughter there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> That's beautiful, Frank. I, uh, I remember it's funny because you talk about getting rid of all these beliefs. And when I first sat in a room and they explained this step to me, he said, oh, you know, we just want to go through. We don't want to, you know, we related it to a garbage dump, you know, because we're clean, doing this house cleaning. It's like, we don't want to get every bottle cap. And I was like, hmm. And it's funny because now, like, I want to pick up every bottle cap. Like, every time there's this disturbance or whatever, however subtle it is, it's like, because these blocks, like, this is the fourth step. The blocks to love's awareness is my beliefs. And this is how I actually get in touch with it. So, yeah, I loved that part. Yeah. And what, one of the things is, you know, it's important to get in, in touch with the anger and the guilt. And, you know, I have... The other day we were watching this movie, David showed the movie Knowing, and there was this separation, you know, from, from, uh, from the son, you know, the, his child who's ascending. And You know, there's so much guilt, and and then I had to go deeper. There was also, you know, anger against him. <laughs> and you know, all this has to be exposed, and you know, and and through moments like I'm going through now, which I couldn't before. You know, I couldn't cry, <laughs> especially not. You know, in a situation like this, but you know, I 
I had to also see the anger, you know, not just, and there was a lot of guilt. I thought, why, why couldn't I be there? When he died. So, you know, that's how deep you have to go, even in front of a camera sometimes. And, uh, you know, that, that's what releases it. And then I'm open and I say, okay, spirit, come in now, you know, just heal it. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, and the other day, you know, I was, we stayed up really late with Lisa, much too late for Lisa. It was 11.30 and then, <laughs> you know, it was coming out. Nine and then, five. you know, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't nine, it was 11.30 already. <laughs> So, so uh, I was pouring <laughs> out, and then you know, I saw okay, there's a resentment here, there's a resentment there, and then, you know, and this sadness here, and this guilt there, and and that's what it is, you know, it's it's a cleanse, and all, all it's it's uh, it's a cleanse, and and all I have to, you know, and 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 the fourth step for me was the beginning of that, and anybody you know who's in the twelve steps who's watching this, you know. I just encourage go deeper, go deeper. You know, um, there's a song that really that came to me in the last two months, and it's an old song. We, by the way, we have to have that song soon as a introduction for our show. Just, just a little reminder. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and we listened to it with Lisa and Worm. You know, here came the tears again, and and uh, on, on in the car, you know, on the ride down. And, you know, this gratitude that, I, you know, that I saw this figure, it was Jesus. And, you know, and, and I saw, you know, and this love with, there was so much love now on this weekend. And, and yesterday we, you know, David and Lisa came in my room and I was in my bed and David was sitting <laughs> on one side of the bed and Lisa, and we were, you know, ex, uh, expressing something. And I thought, you know, it was so loving. Just, you know, that came with the song and I, it just brings tears to my eyes. So crying is a big, um, is a big new thing for me uh, <laughs> because I, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't allow myself to do that. And, and, um, and I think there, there, there's the, you know, there's the cleanse, there's the exposing because, uh, you know, it's very clear in the course, I cannot, you know, don't ask me to get rid of your fears. I cannot do that because that would mean that you have no responsibility in it. I said, okay, now ooh, I feel guilty. What's my responsibility? But the responsibility is just, the, <laughs> you know, that I am, the ego is trying to protect some stuff in there and we're not aware of it. As I say, so where is this peace that passed? passive, all understanding for years now, where is that peace, you know? And, and I was getting very um, frustrated and impatient and throwing books around. And, you know, then I, uh, I, I found the course and it says, you know, you're afraid of it. That's the one thing you're afraid of it. You're afraid of God. I never heard this before because the ego, you know, one, I, I, Eckhart Tolle talks about, it. I said, once you start getting present, re- be, be prepared for backlash. You know, that's the first time I heard it. But there it's very clear. So the ego is protecting this. And then when, when we let all the emotion go, there's, there's something that opens. And that's just, like, okay, now you have it. Here it is. Now, couldn't be more open than now, what just happened to me before. You know, you know I said, okay, now you have it. Please heal it, you know. And... Um, and now I had an experience, like I said yesterday, I walked in the canyon and I said, it's all my mind, you know, and that's the gift. And that's, that's the peace. And, and, um, and it did all, st- I have to say it all started with the 12 steps. It all started with the, with the four step. And, um, and I'm, I'm so um, grateful that I had that lesson because now I come here and, and I expose, and people say, Whoa, well, I learned this 34 years ago. So, Thank you, um, Frank. Mm-hmm. You actually, I had a few things come to me as you were talking. The, uh, you know, thank you for sharing about your son. For some of the people that haven't watched uh, our show before, 
Frank seemed to lose his son to a heroin overdose years ago. But that line of, you know, God enters through the wound, you know, is like, when you hear that, it's like, it's like, that's what we have to be willing to do, you know, to look at that. And we have to bring our awareness to it. You know, Frank was talking about Jesus says in the course, he won't take our fears from us. He can't intervene between cause and effect. It's in the fear and conflict section. So I have to bring my awareness to it, to, to let it go. Like, that's what we have to do. And, you know, that's what we're doing together. And yeah, it feels really precious every time you share about, about that experience. And yeah, just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think there's, you know, this went really, I went, like you say, right into the wound and I don't think right now I have too much more to say about it. <laughs> no, that's perfect. We're, we're yeah. wrapping up on time here today anyway, so. Yeah. So I love being here and doing this. This is, this is really, mm. yeah, this was a new experience for me. Yeah. You just did a fifth step with uh, Facebook live throughout the world. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're actually uh, starting to broadcast the shows on Facebook live. And so we can extend the reach to those who uh, aren't able to get into the zoom room, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to having you get back here to, uh, I think it's tomorrow, you and David and Lisa fly back and then we'll be back up there in a few months to uh, the monastery. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for beaming in. We're also going to have Frank beaming in from the south of France when he <laughs> makes his way across the great ocean. We're going to uh, continue having these shows right throughout the summer and I may be on the road for a few of them and we're going to try to stay connected and beam in and you know take the last step on the road so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah if anyone's in the south of france or anywhere in europe and want to see frank or maybe i'll be over there at some time yeah get a hold of us and we'll we'll come to see you so thanks for uh for joining us today for all of our shows what an amazing day starting with calico and yeah and ending now so We'll see you guys all in, in a week and uh, back to uh, RMCs.